So like I said, today we're talking about desire, aphrodisiacs, and your stench, your smell, your your um, smell as it relates to drawing other people to you. And that has a lot to do with your health, what you're putting in your body, and how you, not just putting it in, it's your ability to absorb and being able to eliminate things as well, too. I'm speaking about this because yesterday I was um, restocking my stuff, right? I was restocking my uh, growth oil like yesterday, well, all night. I ain't go to bed till like one in the morning restocking because I had sold out of everything last week. Anyway, I have a, a growth oil for women. It's called Be Longer. And for men, it's called Be Lengthy, available on my website. And the difference is that um, I used proprietary blends, different bl blends, stronger blends for men. <laughs> For libido type issues in their oil the oil is actually good for growth because it's um, gonna get rid of that blockage in your um, skin you know it's gonna help since your skin is the largest organ it's gonna penetrate inside of you and so it's gonna help with that blockage that uric acid gonna help your lymphatic system gonna help circulation so what is circulation that that ties to erections right right anyway I'm saying that to say when I was making the stuff it smells so freaking good and when I was making it, the man, the um, be lengthy product, <laughs> it wasted on me. <laughs> it wasted on me. And needless to say, it was a cool experience being at this aphrodisiac. Like, right, it wasted all on the counter. One of, you know, one of the bottles tipped over and wasted all on the counter. And I was trying to clean it up in my hands. <laughs> you know, made contact with it. And the first thing, I was listening to some music, I was in my own little zone and stuff. And the first thing I did was roll my eyes. It was the funniest scene. I just laughed at myself because it smells so exotic. And I did that purposefully. I knew what I was doing when I was creating this particular product. Look, he said, not a girl, huh? Yeah, I knew what I was doing when I created this particular product because I like, you know, men smelling good. Men, smell is really... It directly correlates to memory and all right and this is why you know I created it for when they put it on their bald head or when they put it in their beard you know when they next to that lady or whatever you know that they could smell some kind of way and you know it'll be an aphrodisiac for her and at the same time it has citrus type um, essentials inside of it that's gonna heal underneath that beard because sometimes underneath that beard be little bumps and stuff like that right it's pH balance for the skin and it's gonna help that beard not be so rough and brittle, like right. So I thought about aphrodisiacs. I thought about um, talking about that. You know how like dogs um are in heat and they run, they run to go, they'll climb a fence to go chase after another dog because they can sense that, they could smell that, and um and they're yearning to get to the other dog because of the airborne airborne pheromones we have them and um and we're we have even women to a deep, different extent we have copulin type fluids that we can actually penetrate inside the tip of their private parts while they're laying on their back and it'll go all the way to their head and we'll be we'll join we'll unite with them based upon this fluid all of this that i'm talking about pheromones, copulin fluids, and, and, and aphrodisiac, all of this is tied back to your lymphatic system, though. This is another incentive why you should be making sure you are eliminating properly and your lymphatic system is up to par because if not, your lymphatic system has a stench because it's the backup for your blood. And if your blood is thick and tacky, a.k.a. high blood pressure, that means that the lymphatic system is backed up. It's so much in the blood that the lymphatic system is trying to clean since it's the backup. And if it's backed up, then your copulin fluid, so to speak, ain't, you, you, you just missing out on your superpowers. Your airborne pheromones, so to speak, ain't really wowing people like it should. And so, needless to say, there are some ways that you could eliminate that. The top, number one, is detox, of course. Number one is going to be, you know, cleaning out the temple, of course, by what you put inside of it. But another way, a cheat kind of way, is if you're really chaotic inside, you can cheat by putting certain things on your skin that allow your lymphatic system to flow properly and that will clean out your lymphatic system while it 
also has uh, certain essential oils, really rich, powerful essential oils that will give the aphrodisiac um, sensation or smell or memory that you're looking for if your body by itself was clean. So anyway, I incorporated that, incorporated that in these two products is what I'm trying to say here. And it smells so good. You gotta say it like that. You gotta say it like when you talk about the smell, you gotta. It smells so good. <laughs> you gotta say it like that. It is really, really powerful. I did myself on this one here. It's available. Oh my God. Woo! It's available on my website. And um, in my website, the link is in my bio. But I just get so excited when I smell that, like, you know, like, and I, I tell my voice, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to have me some grandchildren real soon off of this one here. My grandbaby is coming. <laughs> but nonetheless, aphrodisiac. And while, I'm sorry, I should have turned my phone off because I get messages all the time and it's going to be beeping. But aphrodisiacs in, um, in, in hell, it ties hand in hand. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I can tell it's a um, home run. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. Hey, Glow Goddess. Thank you for being here. Oh, look at you, Love Hurst. Thank you for passing through, babe. I need to order that ASAP. Yeah, I think I just ordered the other day. Oh, you did? Oh, cool. Well, I, I left this morning and I shipped out um, orders um, this morning. So you should be getting your tracking information via. Um, so they are a fragrance. Uh, well, actually. I put essential oils inside of it. So I, I use like the carrier oils that I use is um, avocado because of the vitamin E and it's good for your skin and the castor that's going to help with circulation and it, castor oil by, by itself, black castor oil to be exact. It helps to, um, you know, uh, circulation and stimulate hair growth as well. But I, I have also a proprietary blend of different herbs that help with it hair growth and so to make it smell instead of you know smelling like castor oil or avocado oil to make it smell really good i use essential oils that i i know are powerful aphrodisiacs and so at the same time you combating like yeast you're combating like dandruff your hair is growing back you have an anti-inflammatory inside of it with the um herbs you got a plethora of magnesium going on you're um, lubricating your head and so you're getting rid of all of this lactic acid buildup and whatever it is up there that's clogging up your hair follicles preventing them from um growing your hair from growing through out and it's ph balance for your skin all at the same time so I'm really, 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 really excited about that particular product. And I just, um, I just increased my, um, quantity based upon the, the, the amount that I made last night. I increased it on my um, website. So it's available. I was actually out. So I opened that back up and I'm ready. I'm so ready for y'all to experience this here. Your, um, I can tell it's a home room. Your dialect. Where are you from? Oh, oh, I'm New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm from New Orleans. I'm in Arizona now, though, but I'm from New Orleans. And um, anyway, outside of that, for circulation, I was talking about on my last live that the lymphatic system, every now and then, is something how, you know, if you think about it, how we'll go and we'll um, get our oil changes on our car. But every six months to a year, a detox is in order. I uh, refreshed that quantity too over the last night or yesterday, this, this past weekend, of uh, my sustained detox, which cleanses the body at a cellular level, getting rid of all fecal matter, getting rid of um, toxicity, parasites, anything that's inside of the gut that is stopping you from digesting food properly that's going to help clean out your blood also and your lymphatic system going back to aphrodisiac actually some of the herbs that's inside of this, this sustained detox they are also um, being that they clean anytime you're dealing with bitters bitter herbs bitter herbs are really going to tackle your lymphatic system they're going to tackle your digestive system they're going to tackle your ability to have proper blood flow because it's cleaning out your blood. It's like it's helping your limb. Once you get rid of that, I'm telling you, aphrodisiac type pheromone type coupling fluid is up to par. Like people just, 
people would look at you a certain way from a distance and kind of want to be with you. You know, you talk about, we, we think sometimes as women, we think we are the lower self that, you know, oh, he want me because I got a big booty or he want me because my eyebrows on fleek, whatever. Really, it's an energetic thing. Really, it's about your aura. It's about your smell. It's about your pheromones. It's about your sense. It's about the light that you are emitting, emitting more than it is that what you have on, more than it is that BBL. You know, and, and I don't create these products for people to want you. You got to want you. You're the operant power here. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is so important to take care of your body so that your aura could speak for you. That your light can speak for you. Your smell, your stench can speak for you because it is also working for you. It is a part of your energy as well. And so this is like increasing your frequency as, as it pertains to a pH level, potential of hydrogen. And so going back to the bitters, the bitters allow oxygen to be delivered to your blood because the number one bitter that's inside of there is the world's most powerful inside of the same detox. Is the world's most powerful source of iron, sarsaparilla root. Now that's going to deliver oxygen to your blood. And the reason why I put this in here is because once upon a time I was anemic, and I was always low on iron, and I was always like cold, and I was always dealing with having to down this little green iron peel. And I finally found the root that helped me heal from the anemic type issue. But at the same time, when you get become a, like a vegan and you're taking these choice of herbs and stuff, you realize that you, you begin to mm -hmm, certain herbs or like aphrodisiacs by yourself. You clean up your body so much to where you, you're conscious now. So you're not, I, I want to be tackled with my words here. You're not like a freaky deaky person. Like you're not like, um, in the Lil Wayne terms, you're not wanting to um, have sex with every girl in the world or every guy in the world, so to speak. But you have that feeling now because now everything is like just wide open, like all your blood is flowing. You don't have no erectile dysfunction. You don't have no um, no moments where you're just not in tune with that desire state of being. But because, and I'm speaking for myself when I say this here, but because I'm conscious, when you get to a conscious place of being, you've already mastered mine, you've already mastered self. So you're not going out saying, oh, I got to get mine, so to speak. You know how to kind of like tame yourself. Like if I'm making sense to y'all without getting blocked from this life, <laughs> you know how to tame or balance yourself because all things are about perfect balance. So you could get to a place in your journey where you clean out yourself. You're not wearing um, glasses anymore. You don't have this blockage where your hair ain't growing. You don't have this blockage where your um, your pheromones or copulent fluids are not secreting properly and drawing the opposite sex to you. And so when you eat a, a, a regular salad, if they have maybe um, some, some exotic fruits inside of it, It'll get you to that state of being where you know your fluids are flowing, where you know that your desire, your ability to have relations or whatever is flowing because of your diet, because you, you're tuned into yourself, because there's no blockage inside of you. Your chakra pools, all of this relates to spirituality. Your chakra pools of energy are in alignment. They're in alignment. And so that is very important. That's important with your spiritual walk. That is important with your health. And well-being, your state of mind. That's important even with your relationships, you know, because you want to be in a healthy relationship where you can couple up and maybe do some coupling with your partner. Because that's a state of being where you can be really, really in tune enough to be manifesting, you know, because now you have all of the elements that, that are working for you. You have two beings that are exchanging energetically breath work. They're doing breath work. They're looking at the, through the eyes of the windows of each other's soul. They're connected. They have become one. And so if they are like-minded beings and have their mind on the same thing at the same time while they are climaxing or engaging in that relation, they can manifest. They can bring forth, like if they want that partnership, that union, they want a house or they want, you know, to, to I don't know, a start a business or whatever they want. 
inside of that relation type moment, they can have that on their mind. And while they're climaxing, act as if the climax is them receiving it, saying, yes, it feels so good to receive it. Oh, I see this or, or da, 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 and use that human imagination. And they just tapped into a most powerful portal for manifestation and whatever they have on their mind during that time is coming it's already been created you know so this is what this is another reason why it's so important important to clean up your body so you'll be able to use these tools use all of your superpowers here in the physical reality that's what you came for to do your God came coming forth in physical form to experience itself. So let no thing separate you from the love of self. Let no thing separate you from yourself and from your superpowers that you came forth with. Everything that you needed, you already had inside of you. From your coupling fluids, from your human imagination, from your heart, have an electromagnetic form of energy that can draw other things to you, from your thinking, you have it all. From that crystal fluid that you had in your head and your soft spot when you were a baby, and you know, and, and nobody knew what it was. Well, that was your backpack. That was your fluid that you would secrete on the day when you become the conscious one. That's what's gonna flow through your land of milk and honey, per se. And allow you to realize that I am the Christ conscious one that I was looking for. And so this, this is really my passion. I'm really passionate about everything that's, that I sell. Everything that I've created. Because I created all of this stuff for me. I created all of this stuff for me when I was in that journey. Part of my journey. Where I was experiencing sickness and disease. And at that, and at that point I was feeling everything. I would go to the doctor and everything I was complaining about. And I didn't find out until later that it's because in my spiritual journey, that was part of my gift. That was part of my gift and ability to be able to feel, to be able to digest something and to tell that it is not working for me. That if it's working for me, that I'll know based upon the way that my body and me and my relationship with the cells of my body are. I didn't know that back then when I was at my lower self. So everything just made me sick. Everything made me edge. But when I got in alignment, when I found my purpose and my passion and myself, when I made peace with all that trauma in, in, in past issues, now I'm in a place in my journey where I know when I put something to my mouth, what it's doing. I'm connected. It might sound a little weird to you because it sounds weird to me when I begin to really, really unfold my gift. I'm connected to that point. And so all these things that I created, <laughs> I created because of how it felt so good on me and how it brought me out of a certain state of being in my life and allowed me to become conscious, allowed me to become one with myself, allowed me to become healthy and have no sickness and disease, allowed me to heal myself from, from um, the, having to constantly go and wear glasses from ear to bowel syndrome, from vertigo, from always getting sick, always having skin breakouts. I got tired of that and I started creating stuff for me and my family. And I'm here at this moment only sharing it with you all because I know if it'll bless me, it'll be able to bless you too. Because you are me, an extension of me. We're all reflections of one another. And I really wholeheartedly believe once we begin to get to know ourselves, once we stumble upon a purpose, in, in reasoning in our mind while we're here in physical form that's when we, we tap into our passion and I believe that we tap into our passion to be in a position to help all them other reflections out there it wasn't just for me to just go through those things and never share those things with nobody it was for me to go through those things to be in this position right now and this right now moment to be able to help everybody <laughs> And so this is why I come on here. Yes, reflections. Yes, speaking to my soul right now. Yeah, definitely. Much thanks. You're welcome. Just order the detox. Oh, okay. You ready for a detox, huh? This is perfect time of the year, too, for a detox. What about an immaculate conception? What about it? What about it? The nine physical. Yeah. Yeah, well, non-physical, you would do it physically and non-physically because guess what? You already have your yin and yang energy um, inside of you. Physically or non-physically, you can close your eyes and, and still use your human imagination, still use your heart and manifest by yourself, with yourself. 
you know, because like I said, you didn't come forth in physical reality. I know we on TikTok and everybody on TikTok, they, they came forward. All the ladies, on, well, all the women, I'll say that. The little women on TikTok that ever found themselves, they think they came forward for to be to, for the man. You know, for please, to please a man, to get a man, you ain't nothing without a man. But baby, whether you are a man or a woman, you came forward with everything already that you did. You really didn't come forward with, with all of this here rules of attachment that you got to be attached to, them, to things. Because that's, guess what? The perfect place or position in life is when you don't have no attachment. When you're a free agent, baby. Because <laughs> who the law says free is free indeed. When you're free-minded. I'm talking about free-minded where you can think by yourself. You see, and you ain't got to go to the doctor. You ain't got to go to the lawyer. You ain't got to go. You can sit down with yourself and ask yourself why. Because you know that you're God. And God never asks yourself a question that he or she don't already know the answer to. You know that your subconscious mind is hooked up to infinite intelligence. And so your so-called Akashic records are right here. You don't really have to go and talk about no why to nobody else. You don't have to need or depend upon anybody else. Because you have everything. But going back to your idea of the immaculate conception that's just it it's you creating with your inner power when all of your chakra pools of energy are in alignment you don't need a partner to have sex you could have actually an orgasm by yourself with yourself with all your clothes on your eyes closed and you just attune into an energetic frequency because you are the or orgasm you are the climax you are all experiencing yourself and so oftentimes so people the women not the ladies the women that's why they'll be you know wanting to get a man you know wanting to go outside of themselves because they don't know themselves they never sat with themselves to get to know themselves because they in that, even when they're with somebody, when they're with a partner, it's their climax that they're feeling. You know, they were like, oh, oh, he was, he was good and he was not good. And, and he broke, beat it out the frame and he, he was want, 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 baby, all of that was you. <laughs> you are experiencing yourself when you are walking on the floor with socks on, you experiencing your feet. You, when you touch somebody, you're experiencing your of hands and your ability to t feel yourself. So when you are having an orgasm, even, that's you. That's your orgasm. And I was telling somebody a while back, they were telling me how a, a sexual experience was really, really good. I was like, well, baby, were you there? Uh, come on now, you're giving all of this other person outside of you all of this credit. But baby, you reached another level of, of being free. You reach another level of being able to climax at that state of being. You were there too. See, this is what we get this here kind of thinking and stuff from religion. Because we all we so used to giving, giving, giving praises to Jesus. We got to go in and we got to re report to um, pastor and we got to bow down because we're the little G kind of God. And we are just a soldier in the army of the Lord. And when we say thank you, we got to say thank you to someone or something outside of ourselves. But baby, the kingdom of God is within you. <laughs> That's where it's with. Thank you. That was so beautiful. The kingdom of God is within you. Thank you, Glo. That was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So if it's within you, how about you think you sometimes? How about you sit back and be like, man, I did that. How about when you have a certain coincidental thought and it manifests and you say, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Even that you didn't say it, I knew that that was going to happen. How about in that particular moment you say, well, look at me creating my reality how about that hey Nia, thank you for being here babe how about that because you are the operating power how about that and i come up in church and my mama come frequently and visit my lives too and she don't say nothing but she be up in the room too and she's a minister still in church and she still reverence her jesus i'm not trying to take you away from G your jesus baby but i'm trying to allow you to see you are the operant power in physical form. And the Christ conscious one was only in that parable to teach you about you and your superpower. And so if you, if you begin to just, just give yourself a thank you, God darn, I did that. 
God darn it, I'm, I'm learning myself. I'm learning my superpower. Because that's equivalent to the praises. That's equivalent to lifting yourself up. And if you lift yourself up, then now you have the ability to draw all things to you. Because if I be lifted up. <laughs> you came in physical form to have a human like God experience. In church, they say, well, we're children of, the, of God. <laughs> so why, why can't you be, be like God in physical form? I'm not trying to teach you no blasphemy or anything. This is, this is, this is, this here. Is something that I know to be true because I sat with myself. I've experienced myself in different realms. Even when I was in church, heavily in religion, I always was called for this year. I was scared of it and because of church, it was like, oh, you're going you to go to hell. You're going to be a backslider. No, baby. You're God in physical form experiencing itself. And God vibrates at all different frequencies. God is the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega, said God. I give life and I take it away. That's letting you know that there is one God, one faith, one baptism. And so that same one is just an illusion of separation. So the church folks say, oh, this is the devil over here and this is God over here. No, no, baby, all is God. Oh, no, you're going to go to hell for this, but you're going to go to heaven for this. No, 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 baby, all is God. One God, one faith, one baptism, vibrating at different frequencies. That's it. <laughs> an illusion of separation that's it it takes us all lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to get that but it's just one and so you could you embrace that so-called bad and know that there's season for bad but also embrace that so-called good so embrace that dark side this is what the key is about religion and spirituality you we collectively have to learn to embrace our dark side just like we embrace our light but no, the light workers, some of the light workers and the so-called Jehovah Witnesses and the so-called um, religious folk, they say, oh no, those people over there are the devil. No, I rebuke you, devil. No, baby. Those people over there are reflections of you just vibrating at a different frequency. But all oh, is God. Everybody have their season or time underneath the sun to, to wake up. Everybody can set their alarm clock to wake up to this knowledge. But baby, oh. Is God. <laughs> All is God. All is God. Experience itself. So God in experience in itself can experience itself whole. Just like the people, people in the, in the so-called projects who I love, man, back home in the world of Louisiana, we have this project and it stank like good up in that daggone project. But baby, they got some gods in that project. I will purposely go past holding my breath this said project all the time especially in the summer because you know the people in the projects on the summer in the summertime they're always sitting out on the porches or whatever and i knew some of them from coming up when i used to work at the little fast food name um place in the neighborhood nearby and they used to walk over there and they used to get their little 99 cent little meals this was years ago when i was a little teenager anyway but when I lived back home in the woods, I was passing this project because I know one thing to be true. I don't give a darn if you in the project. I don't give a darn if you don't have no money. Guess what? Most of the gods up in there. Most of the really, really powerful gods up in there. Most of the real, real powerful ones, they got to go through a lot of gun type things. So they be in environments where it might not smell too good. Yeah, they might be walking around. They might be looking homeless. They might be on drugs and stuff. But that be part of their story. That be part of the story that they playing for now. But one day, and you will call. And they might even be like maybe drug dealers. They might be like little killers, little little rapers or molesters or whatever in the project. They might be doing a so-called bad. But what one thing is for sure, I understand that all this God. And so they knew me. They knew me. I would be blowing my horn when I would go in this said project and I would speak to them. And even if I would go to my children's little basketball games, because sometimes the little, the little, um, little project schools would actually do little basketball games or tournaments with the little so-called uppity schools. And the project schools would be that I would butt. It, it would be, even though my boys was in the, in the little uppity school, God, I'm rooting for the little project children too because they, they parents in, in, in on the bleachers. I can feel that energy. I feel that aura. I know God when I'm experiencing God. I know when I'm saying to myself, God, darn, look at these superpowers. They don't even know. They, they have no idea why they're going through so much hell at this point in time. I don't look at them, down on them. I know that 
all this God experience in itself. And I'll be like cheering for them when they when they dunking on the on the little uppity schools. I put my children in the little uppity schools, y'all. When they dumping dunking on the little uppity schools, I'm still cheering for them because I'm looking at them. I'm like, oh my God, look at how athletically inclined these gods are. Even at their young age, look at their mother and their father. Even at their young age. I don't care if they're cursing and hooping and hollering and probably about to fight and all that. They never messed with me because energetically, they always knew who I was. So energetically, I know who they are too. We're no greater, no greater. We just all have a different season to roam up in here. <laughs> but all is God having a human experience. And so I would speak to them and I would hang, hang with them sometimes. I'd talk to them, you know. We, Cause we all in New Orleans, we all could just, you know, just, just chop it up at the game or whatever. And my son is like, man, my, what team you on? I'm like, I'm on who on both of y'all teams. Just as long as we having fun, we just having a good old time, baby. We just having a good old time because I understand that there's an illusion of separation and all is God. And as you walk on your life. In your journey, you will understand that God, there's a time to be born, there's a time to die. That's God. Yeah. There's a time to, 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 to laugh, there's a time to cry. Yeah, but guess what? That's God. All is God. And so I was talking about aphrodisiacs on here. I was talking about pheromones. God has all of these little tools that God can use. God has all of these ways that God, you, can manipulate energy here while you experiencing yourself. And God, you, wants to experience all. And what happens when God experiences all? God experiences all and it gives back its experience back to the source when it times out. And what happens to our source? Our source just becomes greater and greater and greater. And we just keep on evolving back to God. <laughs> because there's only one. We might look a little different, even in the matrix, even with health and wellness in the matrix, they have this illusion of separation, even with health and wellness. So you'll go to the doctor and in, in the ranges of the work, the blood over there is conducive of that of a Caucasian being like, right? You know, we have an illusion of separation, right? Well, we'll still go there and then, and we'll, we'll get their types of medicine, so to speak, and we'll get their types of, of, of food. And we, 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 we used to be drawn to these scraps back in one of the lifetimes, but now it takes so much from like a person like me. I got to constantly remind you all that, hey, this is not the way that you should eat because in this illusion of separation, even us. We're separated from one for another, but really all, we, all of us are God. Okay, so we have this so-called in this illusion because we're under the law of polarity where there's two sides. So since there are two sides, they got to be a black and they got to be a white. <laughs> yeah, they got to be a dominant and then they got to be a recessive. They got to be a yin and a yang. They got to be a good versus evil. They got to be. But guess what? When you roll up to that hierarchy, all oh, is God. <laughs> So here I am, and so I like to share with the people that's in the matrix that kind of look like me, that kind of vibe on the frequency that I am in. Because since there's such an illusion of separation, some of the things that the other huge beings do, it's really not cool for us to do. We'll experience this thing called sickness and dis-ease. And so since the medical industry is really pretty much helping in this illusion, the, 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 the um, blood work is conducive of that of a Caucasian being. Well, since the medical industry is doing that, I like to come forward and tell the people, since I've been through that state of being already, tell the people, okay, but there is something for you when you're more on the dominant side of this here chain. Where there is something for you where you ain't got to experience just ease and disharmony. Where you could go back to doing what is good for your body. Because see, if your body, if you have the curly hair, since we're under the illusion of separation and the law of polarity, then there has to be somebody that has the straight hair. If, if, if you have the darker hue, then there has to be somebody with the lighter hue. And I ain't saying nothing is wrong with these people. I ain't saying I don't love because all is God. I love all. I'm just saying in the matrix, there's a separation here underneath this illusion. So do what your coding is for you to do in order for you to have a great quality of life. I am also saying that the way that you digest food is not conducive of the way that they digest food because they have a lot of a lot of acids that's breaking down their food. So your bloody steak eating self, 
you ain't gonna make it like like they would make it because they have the extra assets that's, that's staring that down for them. Your 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 potatoes, yeah yeah yeah, that's turning into turning into mucus inside of you. It's gonna be a little different for you digesting that. It's gonna sit your hot sausage sandwich. It's gonna sit on you a little bit longer. Because it's a little different. Don't get mad at me that it's different. You learned this in school. You learned about the blue-eyed bean and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the brown-eyed bean. You learned about the recessive and the dominant trait. Act accordingly in the matrix so you could experience a great quality of life. And then when you experience this great quality of life and your lymphatic system is flowing and you have this mental clarity about yourself and you, you tapped into your superpower, guess what? <gasps> you cracked the code. And then, you, then you'll have eyes and you'll be able to see yourself because then you'll be back in tune to your first eye. But you have to do that work first, God. And that work is you getting to know yourself and how yourself functions inside of this illusion. You got to get to know the part of the story that you play in this game of life. Because you're playing a part whether you want to play or not. You said before you came forth that you wanted to play now, right now, you could act like you don't want to play no more. And Earth, you know how they have this little TikTok where it's, Earth is ghetto. I want to get up out of here. Well, you created the ghetto. You created the ghetto in your mind. You created the ghetto when you thinking that everybody was out to get you when you the operant power here. When you came forth in physical form knowing that you was going to have this crappy story in the beginning, you knew that it was going to be this traumatic beginning, but because you knew that who you were and the totality of what you were, God, that you would make the best, the rest of your days or the latter part of your days, just like Job, the best days of your life, right? But when you come forth in physical form, you get into this illusion and you see, you, you start blaming all of this stuff, this illusion stuff outside of here, like the government is after me, the white people are after me, the police are after me, this one's after me, corporate America is after you. No, you after you. The way you think is after you. Because as a man think it, so is he. And it's all about a renewing of a mind. But in the matrix, because of the illusion is going on of separation, because this feels so real, because you forgot that you pick your parents, you pick your story, you pick your trauma, and that you made the thought to get down to your lower self. You forgot that all of this is you. Now you can play, you want to play the victim. But all you gotta do in victim state of being is remember. <laughs> Remember, you got to remember that you're God. You got to remember that your superpowers are within you. And so people like me that come on the tick to the top are here to remind you. To remind you because you as God, you ask a question. And the only people that don't going to pass through on these two lives are the people that ask a question in their subconscious mind. And God never asks himself a question. That he or she don't already know the answer to. So your subconscious mind created me to come forth in your reality to remind you or deliver to you your answer. Oh, because you God. To deliver you the answers to allow you to remember. Because <laughs> you, you forgot, but today it's time for you to remember. And so it ain't nothing, no outside circumstances that, that are affecting you. It's you and your thought process that are affecting you. Because you could be, do, or have anything. Once you get to know yourself, tap into all of your superpowers once again. Because the kingdom of God is within you. Within you. Manipulating energy. That's all we're doing here. Manipulating energy. Using superpowers. Remembering who we are. Creating our reality. Door by door by door by door. <laughs> and I've been on this, this journey for years. And I traveled down this journey from religion. From sitting on the first row of the pew. <laughs> for every church service. From asking why. Which something in church they, they tell you. You you get popped upside your head. Yeah. If you ask why. But I was always inquisitive. I wanted to know why. And so I went down the rabbit hole myself to find out why. Because nobody would answer my why. And I wanted to know. And they would say, you got to just believe. But why? Believe what? But why? I want to 
supposed to know. So I, I come from religion. Well, all, well, my aunties, my uncles, they all pastors, my mom, a minister, and I'm sitting up there and I had so many roles in religion. I was in a choir. I was a camera girl. I was the pastor's assistant. I was the usher. I was a treasurer. I was so many roles in the church. Church just consumed my life as a little girl. But I had all of these questions too as a little girl. All these questions were building up in my subconscious mind. And just like I said to you before, God never asked himself a question that he don't already know the answer to. So when I became 17 years old, I was on a journey to find out why. Because then I was no longer underneath my mother's roof. Because back in that day, you had the parents that said, you going, why? Because I said so. And you going to do this because I said so. That's what the, the elders said then. So then it was my season to experience spirituality. And I said to myself, I want to do everything opposite of what I was doing in religion. I want to eat everything opposite from what I was eating in the, in the church. I want to do everything different. And if I go to hell, so be it. I felt like I was already in hell. I want to find out my why. And when you get to a place in your journey, like I said earlier, when the, who the law has set free is free indeed. When you get to a place where you're your own entity, when you understand your power, you still believe in a source, but you look at religion and you look at um, spirituality and God as a as an energy instead of a man upstairs that's going to bring me to hell. You look at God as being all, man, you set yourself free. And if God is all, that means you are all too. You are all that exists in your so-called kingdom, your illusion of separation from God. <laughs> you are all. And then when you start paying attention, see, being conscious is really a thought thing. People think consciousness is being woke and they want to pump this and, and be about all black people and wear an onk and, and, you know, and <laughs> grand rising type energy. But it is about being conscious of the way you are thinking. It is more about being in alignment with the laws of this land, the energetic laws. It is a thought by thought process. The I amness, the I am that I am. So what are you? What are you manifesting? What are you doing in your journey? You came forward to be God. You came forth to experience yourself as God. So what are these thoughts, these habitual thoughts that's going through your mind day in and day out? What are they telling you? That's what being conscious is all about. What are you conscious of being? Are you conscious of being everything? If you're conscious of being everything, we hold up because God is all. If you're conscious of being everything, I got to let you know, you are also nothing. Mm -hmm. If you're conscious of this here reality being a dream, then you also have to be conscious of it being low-key real at the same time because see, God is all. You see, if you're conscious of a so-called good experience, then you also have to be conscious of bad because God is all and there's two sides to every thing, but the hierarchy of it all is one God. And that the, the thing that really runs this whole thing this whole hierarchy of, of energy <laughs> is the operant power. So on your side, in your human imagination, with your subconscious thinking, you know that what really runs this show is the most powerful form of love that there is. And life and people in life, they're not against me. They're not against me. They're for me. That, that the so-called bad things... They're happening for my good too. I used to work in corporate America and I used to want to climb the corporate America ladder once upon a time. I don't desire that anymore. But I will pose for it. And I, the, the dream, I had two dream kind of like good jobs that I wanted to do. One was going to be coordinating for the In Shape program because I knew so much about health and wellness. And I wanted to be able to help my peers with their health and wellness and spearhead it. The job was for somebody who stayed there <laughs> forever. And I never did never posted that particular job. Because, you know, that was like a good job. You know, the good jobs, people like die or retire in them, right? And so then the other job was for um, a customer service manager because I feel like that I was good and still am good with people, like, right? 
And so I would post for these jobs. And, and at that time, I wasn't, in the beginning stage of that, I was not conscious. I was not looking at my good and so-called bad. And the bad was just bad and shitty. But guess what? Now, if I look back over my life now being conscious, I know that that bad was working out for me because I wasn't supposed to get that there. I know that the stumbling blocks, what I would call that, or the they don't want me to get the job kind of speak that I was saying back then, that was supposed to happen because no, no, I don't want you to be a customer service a rep or manager over there. I want you to do it for, for these people right here. <laughs> for your own self, for your own business. No, I want you to learn how to deal with difficult people over there. And I want you to use that skill over here. You see, so all things, even the so-called bad, are working out for your good. No, no, no. I want you to be efficient. I want you to pay attention to details. I want you to be very analytical. I want you to know how to be an accountant. I know. I want you to know how to be an executive assistant. I want you to know how to be a dispatch. All of these things that you use it over there. <laughs> Yeah, I want you to be able to go over there and work for casinos. I want you to be able to deal with large quantities of money. I want you to be able to know about stocks. Yeah, I need you to know all of those things because you're going to need all of those things and information for over here for when your season come, God. That wasn't a, a setback. That was, that was a set up for something greater. Those things were, oh no, you can't be the in-shape coordinator over there. No, because you got these people over here. You got these people in a new state that you're going to move from over there. And these people in this new state, they're going to need you. You have all kind of retreats that you got to set up and you got to be there. You got to cook for these people. Oh, oh, and another thing. I was, I wanted to be, I wanted to have a vegan uh, food truck. Melanated vegan out there in New Orleans, Louisiana. I couldn't do that. And I thought, okay, well, could, um, COVID came and I couldn't do that. And that was something that I desired. I really wanted to help the people with vegan food and stuff. And I could cook really, really good. And, and I was I was thinking, okay, well, I guess this, this ain't going to work for me. This is the so-called bad. No, no. I need you to know about those oils. I need you to know about those herbs. I'm just teaching you over here with the food truck idea. But it ain't going to work. COVID going to come. COVID going to come. And you ain't you going to get the truck. You're going to have to get rid of the truck. Because guess what? You ain't going to. You're not supposed to be here in no Louisiana. I'm calling you. Something greater is calling you in Arizona. <laughs> So when you do your retreats and everything, now you can feed the people. Now you know what herbs are choice and stuff to feed the people. It's always, your bad is always setting you up for something greater. And the funniest thing about all of those things and jobs and things that I wanted to do, <laughs> the in shape job, the funniest thing happened when I announced my retirement, the lady, the one that was sitting on that job that I wanted for 22 years that would never move. As soon as I announced my retirement, that lady, she announced that she was moving to another job too. And I was like, oh, y'all funny. In my mind, in my habitual thinking, I was like, my subconscious thoughts are so funny. So now the job was open, but the job was never for me. No way. I had already purchased my home. I was, all, I was already packed and ready to go. But it was never for me. So when you really look at all being God, you could really give yourself peace with every so-called shitty situation you're in like oh i'm not getting a job the peace comes in knowing that if it is for you you cannot not get it like you could go to yale you could go to jail whatever you supposed to be in this journey i'm telling you it is perfectly orchestrated by source energy that you can get there Thought by thought by thought by thought. And you think, oh, I didn't get that one because something is greater is coming. And you, you think that people just say this stuff to make you feel good. No, baby. I ain't trying to make you feel good. I'm telling you the law. <laughs> All good and perfect things come to you. They come. They have to. And they come in because of your thought. Because every time you think about it, you want it. And you're conjuring up more energy for it and you're desiring it and that desire has to manifest in physical form because that's the way you manipulate energy that's your superpower and thought by thought is getting greater and greater and greater and greater until your subconscious mind yields to you because you're god it's yours it's yours yeah love it thank you thank you 
I need the name of those new products so I can get one for him and one for her. Oh, the name of the product is called Be Lente. I started running my mouth. I started preaching. <laughs> be Lente and Be Longer. There's one for women and one for men. It's available on my website. We were talking about aphrodisiacs, but y'all know I be going. <laughs> the aphrodisiac effect of these products is off the chart. Off the chart. I promise you. Yeah, it's yours. Hey, Sycamore. All in divine order. All in divine order. I'm telling you. There were so many things. You could look at my YouTube channel and you could see me. You know, I was I was doing hair and stuff. I, um on my YouTube channel in the beginning, before I even started selling my um my products, I was just doing stuff on me and showing. I was um on my YouTube channel back then. I was cooking. I was dropping off. I was doing vegan burgers and stuff. And I was dropping off. I was going to like barber um, shops and stuff. I was doing so many different things that now collectively, all of that was preparing me for this year. I was going through this year stuff from sickness and hair and and and, and, and wellness without having a platform. And I was just trying to make myself feel good. And so I went through all of that to get here to be in a position to help and talk to you. So even with my trauma, you look back at your trauma that you go through, yeah, your trauma might feel like, oh my gosh. Uh, why does this have to happen to me? Nah, 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 nah. Girl, don't take my trauma from me. Because had not I been through that trauma back then, I wouldn't be in a new conversation. I love running my mouth and helping people and being in a position to help inspire other people on their journey. So what would I talk about had I not been through some things? How could I identify something inside of that person? At least I hadn't dealt with it myself at one point in time. I wouldn't be good for nothing. How could I be in a certain discernment of their energy when I never knew how to discern the energy of my own? So everything you're going through is for the greater good. I promise you. Look at it that way. I promise you. It's all purposeful. And so it is. Yeah. Hey, powerful boy. Please pass the collection. Please. <laughs> I know, because I went off. I came on here to talk about aphrodisiacs and I started preaching. But it's a beautiful journey. Life is beautiful. Life is so beautiful. Life is supposed to be fun, though. You are supposed to be looking at your life and just manipulating energy and having fun with it. I was telling a lady that I was consulting with. She was telling me um, about, uh, well, I can't say that. I don't discuss my conversations. But she was telling me about her issue. And I was telling her, look, girl, you need to learn how to use your superpower. I'll tell you what I was saying. You need to learn how to use your superpowers. Because I use my superpower everywhere I go. I'm going to tell y'all this one time. I ain't going to tell y'all this no more. So you catch it on this video. You have something that nobody else could know. So like when I go out, part of me knowing that I'm God in human form, I use my habitual thinking to manipulate the energy of other beings, right? And you have the same power too. You could call it hoodoo, voodoo. You could be scared of it if you want to. But guess what? other people use it you might as well learn how to use it today so it's just thought it's just energy like right and so i went to the tires place to get some new tires on my car i wanted to um have new tires because i'm in a new state and i'm in a desert and we ain't stopping on the side of the road right <laughs> so i got brand new tires and i went there to um because the light was on and it was really something simple that i needed the guy to you know at least reset the light or put more air in it. I ain't know what was wrong. And the guy, they had, you know, at the tire place, they have the little garages. They had four little garages that was open and they had cars in all four of them. But they didn't have any other car waiting and they had more guys versus the garages. So I'm like, surely one of these guys could come and fix this little small issue I got, right? So I pull up and I talk to one of the guys and he, he was like, um, hey, we're, um, we're really, really swamped right now. It's going to be a minute. I'm thinking to myself, are oh, you just lazy? Because um, ain't nobody outside of the garages. And them cars, you know, they look like they got big issues. I just got a little issue. Somebody surely can help me. And he was like, and I was like, oh, okay. I didn't want to create resistance. This is how I think. I didn't want to create resistance. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. And I'm thinking to myself, this is how you got to be in your kingdom. I'm going to teach you this year. I'm thinking to myself, I didn't come over here for nothing. Somebody's going to help me with this entire issue. This is going to get resolved today, right now. 
So which one of these handsome, strong men are going to come from underneath the hood of a car and see me? Which one of them are going to be drawn to my aura, my light, my energy? And as soon as I was saying this, and I'm not talking out loud. I'm using my habitual thinking because this is how you create through your human imagination and your heart. Right? You put that electric and magnetic, electromagnetic form of energy out there to get a spark. So that's what I said. And as soon as I finished saying that, a little white, young, handsome little white guy lifts his head from underneath the hood. And he made eye contact with me. And I said in my habitual thinking, bingo, it's going to be him. And so I walked over to him and I told him what was, you know, happening or whatever. And he came, he was like, oh, I'll take care of that for you for a minute. And I was like, in my mind, this is how you got to, this is how you got to talk now with authority. Ain't no begging and stuff. And I said in my mind, I was like, yeah, I knew, I knew somebody would. This is how you got to be in your habitual thinking, having faith that you are the operating power, having faith that what you need done, let, having enough faith that you understand, just like in the biblical text, my word, my spoken habitual thought, it can't come back to me, boy, I'm getting this done there. And so this man, he came over and, you know, we just small talked while he was there. I was like, oh, thank you so much. You have a good day, babe. I appreciate you. And I'm leaving. And I said in my habitual thinking, I said out loud goodbye to the other little lazy ass man that told me that they was broke. Because I asked him, I was like, what time you going to close? It was like 4 o'clock. He ain't closed to 7 and he ain't have no line. But he ain't going to do the work, I guess. But I said goodbye to him. I called his name. And I, was, I was like, goodbye. But at the same time, in my mind, I was like saying, see, all things are working out for me. I get what I want. You see, when you do things like that, that's a little tip for you all. When you do things like that and you build up energy like that, it's equivalent to, to, to what people be talking about having a gang of ancestors walking with them and talking with them. You got to build up. You got to edify the church. You got to edify yourself. You got to build up your self-concept. You got to put yourself back up there on your throne and understand that you are God in physical form manipulating energy here. Thought by thought by thought by thought. This here kind of stuff ain't going to church folk. If you're up in there, he ain't bringing you to hell. <laughs> He's going to teach you how to know thyself. I ain't teaching you something that I wouldn't teach some of my children or people that I love. And this is love for me sharing this here with you. Because oftentimes, often, most often than not, you your own stumbling block. You your own stumbling block. You, you don't want to thank yourself. You don't want to praise yourself. You the hardest person you could be on yourself. But guess what? Your self-concept is sending out a signal. And if your signal is being sent out that, oh, I'm a low G kind of God. Oh, I'm not worthy. There's nothing worthy but him. And if you calling God a him, him got to be over there. Him got to be outside. Him got to be not in you. God is in you. God, the kingdom of God is in you so you got to learn how to take turn that switch off i'm telling you turn that switch off and turn on a new one and in 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 because that unworthy signal that's the reason why you go through some things that's the reason why negative experiences come to you that's the reason why things don't work out always for you because you don't feel worthy some of us in a physical reality, we, we so used to feeling or being nice because nice matters. No, it don't. No, it don't. Because remember what I told you, all is God experience itself. You mean to tell me only God could only experience itself being nice? No, Tut. No, Tut. It don't work like that. No, 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 no. I give life. Remember that? I give life and I take it away. So, so to take it away, uh, the nice guy ain't, 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 ain't a take it away. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that don't sound nice to me. That don't, that don't sound nice to me. No, it ain't all about being nice. It's about sending a signal that I'm worthy. I'm worthy of, of riches. I'm worthy of health and wellness. I'm worthy of healthy relationships. I'm worthy. What nice get you? Nice gonna get you a wet ass. In a dry purse, probably. 
But feeling worthy going to get you the desires of your heart, though. I tell you that. When you feel worthy, people know you feel worthy. When I walk up in a room, my aura, my self-concept commands attention. And I just sit there and smile because I know myself. I sat with myself. Oh, they, 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 they feel my life. They're experiencing my life. They know I feel worthy. Get to that place, that state of being with anything. And I promise you, you will enjoy it. I promise you that's when the fun begins. I promise you that that's when you really, really get into know yourself when you feel worthy. When you feel worthy. It ain't about nice. It ain't about nice. Because God can be God in any frequency. All is God already. All good and perfect gifts come from God already. We already know you good. But are you worthy though? <laughs> are you worthy to make the money you want to make? Are you worthy to draw other people to you? Are you worthy? It's time to start feeling worthy. I wouldn't tell you no wrong, baby. Let's see. Big facts. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful place um, to, to, to be, to grow into, to get to know yourself. Because to know yourself is to know God. I want y'all to know yourself to a point where you know your superpower. I want you to know yourself to the point where you know you're worthy. That you know the signal that you are emitting is a signal that you want to come back to you. Yeah, that's what I want you to know about you. And, and why do I want you to know this? Why do I? What is it in there for me? Huh? I, I'll tell you what's in there for, for, for me because we are a collective consciousness. See that oneness that we all stem from is a collective consciousness. So I know when you wake up energetically, I'm going to feel that thing. When you start feeling worthy, I'm like, oh crap, here we go, here we go. God is getting greater and greater and greater because somebody else remembered who they were. Somebody else woke up. So that means the collective rises. This is what they mean when they when I hear that song. This is what I get out of it when they say, when I move, you move, just like that. When I move, you move, just like that. Yeah, the collective righteousness. This is why I come over here to teach you about spirituality and getting to know thyself. Yeah, I need you to remember because you're part of me. You're an extension of me. And even for those who are not on this live in this point in time and space, telepathically, they can hear still. They can hear me speak. They're just not ready to hear the message. But they can hear me speak. You know this to be true, God. Because, like, for example, you will say something. Or maybe you was thinking some of the things that I'm saying right here. And you would say in the comments sometimes, oh, I was just thinking about that. Because we're sharing this collective consciousness. We're sharing these thoughts. There is no new nothing. There is no new thought. No one thought. <laughs> Not no thought here that hasn't been thought of before. Because in the beginning of the so-called creation, everything was already created. You just got to get to the frequency of it. You got to use your superpower to quantum jump to that energetic space of it. Because energy is neither created nor destroyed. Everything just is. <laughs> So everything that you want, it just is already. You just got to get your mind and your heart there, God. You got to use your superpowers to get your electromagnetic form of energy so ignited that you, boom, I'm there. God damn, it just seemed like yesterday I was in New Orleans trying to rebuild that house. Yeah. From that last hurricane, I remember that it was yesterday. Now look, look, I'm there in the house that I... I manifested. How did I get here? Oh, oh, because I used my human imagination when I was out there and painting that fence. And I said that I don't, I don't even want a fence like this no more. Just give me some cement box. And was, oh, so now I have a cement fence. It's, it's, it's right, it's right there. And I said, oh, I don't want a swimming pool and all this extra stuff. I just want a house that's an open floor plan. And I want these cherry, these cherry wood. Cabinets. And I want to be able to smell this 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 wood, and and oh my cabinets are right there, and I said oh, oh, oh how it will feel it will feel so good when I take my shoes off to to be able to walk on some tile, and so 
the tile is right here because I felt that thing. I thought that thing. I smelled those cabinets. And oh, I could, I could, I could smell them right now. But they're right there now. They're right, right, right there. They're no longer in here because my subconscious mind helped me with a bridge of incidents to draw the thing that I was thinking about to me. So now it is right, right, right there. It's right there. I took it out of here and I put it right there. And you could do that too. That's your superpower. Ain't no coincidence and nothing just happening. You're experiencing yourself. You're experiencing your thought. So if you if you're right there is 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 living under the bridge at this moment. If you're right there is is seeing a pile of bills at this moment, then what you gotta do is you gotta change that thought. You gotta change the things that you're imagining about. And then you gotta throw in the feeling with that thing. And you gotta say, Oh, what does it feel like? To be that free. And then when you get that feeling, you know, it's going to give you an image. So when you get that image or that feeling, you got to milk that feeling. So, so now, because you, you, you milk the feeling of not having good health or maybe not having prosperity or not having a partner or not having a job. You milk that feeling so much that it gave you that. So that's why you're there. This here was a cause. And what you're looking at is the effect. God. So you change it. You change it by thinking something else. And you put a feeling in it. But you got to keep on putting the feeling. You got to think about this thing. You put a feeling, a good feeling toward it. Often. When you start when you start paying attention to that bill or that, or that bad health, you got to switch that feeling and go back to the good feeling that you want to experience instead. You got to turn the other cheek is what I'm saying. You got to turn the other cheek to that. And give all of your attention so it can become greater and greater the things that you want. And so your subconscious mind, oh, 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 she's thinking a new thought, guys. We, we got to change this here illusion to something else. Wait, hold up. What is she drawing for us? Pay attention to the picture that she's drawing for us. Because this is the thing that we got to yield to her next. Because she's asking. And the biblical text says, going back to religion, if you religious people up in here, the biblical text says, ask and you shall receive. Knock. And that door going to be open for you, babe. Are you knocking? you asking or are you begging because let me tell you something about begging begging is low frequency and begging is aching to you asking for the same thing that you got and see i didn't know this in religion i used to beg all the time you know what i beg for i beg for my daddy to come back home for a long time as a little girl in my closet yeah and i tried all kind of things to get him to come back home but i was begging i was at low frequency and I was pushing him forward and forward energetically than, than I wanted. I didn't know that back then. But I learned later, energetically, oh, man, I was begging. I was doing it the backwards kind of way. Backwards. Because I was begging. Don't beg no more. If you used to beg to Jesus, even if you keep your Jesus, baby, there's nothing wrong with your Jesus. Go on and keep your Jesus. But don't beg from your Jesus. Have that now kind of faith with your Jesus. So that you could get whatever it is. Because I don't care what you believe in. I want you to believe in yourself. I just want you to believe in something. But I want you to believe in not beg. Believe in not beg. Because you are powerful. And sometimes we be so scared of our own power. But you are powerful enough to put your mind on something and you can get it. But you gotta put your mind to it. And I come on here and I talk about health and wellness so much because the, the, the attention span and the mental clarity don't really be there when we sit. And we get out it. And we want the bills ain't getting paid. And we maybe we don't have that relationship or that job that we want. We don't, we, we can't really hear that. So that's why I love so much my God is just being able to be. To allow blood flow with these herbs to sustain, sustain these. Up, to allow blood flow. Oxygen to be delivered to your brain again. Because some of us are really not hearing. We have the ears but we ain't hearing nothing. Because we don't have the mental clarity. In the attention span. So that's that's why I, I, I really am passionate about this page. And I'm not letting go of that page. Because I want to help those people. That have ears. Gather up and get that good soil. So that they can use those ears. And hear again. So that they can use their eyes. And see again. So that they can be in tune with what they say in religion. I once was lost. But now I am found. 
How did you get found, baby? How did you get found? Oh, because I remembered. I remembered who I was. Thank you. You are so welcome. You are so welcome, baby. Let's see. Let me look at these new, new, um, let me stop preaching and look at these comments over here. <laughs> Let's see. I started my raw journey, journey a week ago and I feel so good. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Keisha. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Queen. I sent you a free friend request. Okay, Sycamore. Thank you. I'm going to have to um add that when, wait, I think I could do it here. Let me see. No, no, I didn't hit the wrong thing. I thought I could. Let me see if I did this. Okay. Oh, look. I'm getting fancy. I just did it. I just did it. I just um, added you as a friend on here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of these distractions. Yeah. Low vibrations. It, it distracts you from you being God. Fear tactics distract you. You know, it, it's just, it's just like a, like the game of life, but you gotta be focused in the game. It's almost like we bobbing and weaving from the bull crap in the game. Like, you know, that, that's what I do in my game. It's like I was telling you about the guy with the, at the tire shop. I'm going to bob and weave from you because there's somebody over here that's going to help me. <laughs> and you just keep on bobbing and weaving to get the things that you want, to get to the desires of your heart, to get to know yourself, to get to another level, to get to where, where joy is the key, where it's actually really, really fun, where it's actually like you're playing. Like I love the Pac-Man game. It's almost like you're playing the game of Pac-Man. Like, like they have the ghosts and goblins that are out there. That's the low vibrational um, beings. And you just get away from them. You just get away and up every now and then you tuck off up in a corner and you bite on one of the bullets that's aching to you using your superpower. Now you're invincible. Now you know that nothing can hurt me. Now you know that I can be, do, or have anything. And so you, you on your path, you eating up the little, the little pellets and you about to clear the board because I'm invincible at this point. I'm in that Christ conscious state of being now. Now I'm about to tap into another realm. I'm about to create this. I'm about to do this and I shall get this and I am this. I am who I say I am. And I'm about to clear this board. I done cleared this board already. I'm just doing it again because it was fun. Because life is supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be fun and guilt-free and worry-free and animosity-free. Free for you to just be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Duck and weave. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're popping and weaving from the bull crap, boy. I'm about to make it to the next level up in here, boy. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. That's what I say in my habitual thinking. Have fun with your inner being, your inner self. Tell yourself. Nobody only got to know what y'all just found out. Nobody ain't got to know what you're thinking. That's the beautiful thing about it. Like, you could be up in there in your own zone and your mind. Watch this. Watch what I'm about to manipulate over here. Because you have power to do that. And it, and it all starts from you paying attention to that something said, said voice. You know, back in the day, I used to have... Um, noises when i would sleep i would hear things calling my name and and you know i was scared of it thinking in religion oh that's the devil type stuff i would hear things telling me no go home turn around call so and so where are you stop thinking that it's okay you know it's just little thoughts like right but I had an imaginary friend when I was a little girl, so my, my parents told me, you know, that's that's the devil. You ain't no imaginary friend. You need to go to church. You know, the male was back then. Everything was the devil in hell. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I, I would have to let go of those things, and I couldn't give energy to that thought. But, oh, when I got out, when I got free from that, that religious mindset in that home, when I became 17 and I got out of the house, <laughs> I paid attention to that voice and I suggest you pay attention to your voice because your voice is your inner being and your voice is your internal GPS to steering you to the right direction because how you feel matters. Your voice, your voice is in alignment and your voice is like it has the big picture. It's like your voice could see everything that's happening on the game. They could see where the goblin is over there in that corner. But maybe you are you on this corner and you can't see. Well, your voice, your inner being knows those things and shares those things with that something said, that still voice in your ear. 
But if you ignore it, you are the ones that have ears and are not hearing. If you ignore it, I stopped at 17. I stopped ignoring mine. I'd be like, what you say? I don't care if I had a thought of bringing an umbrella and it's sunny outside. I'm going to bring that umbrella and be like, okay, I got it. I don't care if it told me to turn on this year's street and I was on my way to go to work. Guess what? I'm about to be late for work. Wait, wait, wait. What'd you say? Go, go this way? Because every time you pay attention to your voice, your inner being, energetically, you develop a closer relationship and you become able to hear it clearer. This is why I, or how you get discernment for yourself and for other people. And so that, so now since you know yourself and you can hear this voice clear, that's how I am able to know when somebody called me for a consultation, what's going on with them immediately. What they call it for, what they need done, <laughs> or really what they need to do. Because I can hear, I can hear. I'm telling you, you get me. Get to know yourself. That, that sums up everything I'm saying. You, baby, get to know yourself. We, uh, some of us know all these lyrics of these songs. Some of us know, you know, what's going on with the housewives of whoever, Atlanta, New York, wherever, New Jersey, wherever they at. All these TV shows, you know about all that other stuff outside of you. You know the corporate American people that I come from. You know everything about about this this this, this, this analytical report you didn't did for the company. You know about all of the near misses and and you know you know about the budget. You know about who started who on what team and all this stuff for that company, baby. Get to know yourself, because to know yourself. Is to know God and you want to get to know God because in knowing yourself you bring self on to lifetime after lifetime eons after e eons that job and them other people like and other things outside of you that's just gonna be the meaningless stuff that they talk about in the book of Ecclesiastes all of this is meaningless but you <laughs> getting to know you shall never be because it's stored in your subconscious mind for when you need this information and when you need to retrieve something from your record room, a, aka your Akashic record. Get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Whew. It has saved my life on many occasions. Hey, Twice Thomas, thank you for being here. Talking to God. Yeah, that, that's really all it's all about. Talking to the God within. The God within you, the God within you that knows everything. And believe it or not, let me tell you now, all of these products that I have on my website, <laughs> I learned how to create these things because I had ears to hear. Every last thing that I have here, every last thing, y'all don't have everything here, all of my, my beard growth oil and you know, the little edges for the be longer and all the little detoxes and stuff. It was because I was at a certain state of being where I needed this here stuff for my body at one point. But guess how I got all the ingredients <laughs> from listening to that voice. Guess how, guess how I figured out how to make the measurements from listening to that, that self same voice from, 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 from remembering. Yeah. From remembering. In the, in the middle of the night, in my and I, ever since I was a little girl, I was getting getting words and voices in the middle of the night. So and, and it reminds me of that biblical text that said, "In a dream, in a vision of the night, when man sleeps in slumbers, and so many words, I'll give him his orders and his instructions." He was giving me my orders and my instructions for this point in time in my life when I'll be here and I'll have all of these things available to help you get through your season. <laughs> so I I knew how much it is to put in that. And I knew about, and, 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 and it was like, it would give me this information. And I'll get up in the middle of the night. I would sleep with a notebook on the side of my bed, y'all. i get up in the middle of the night. And I sometimes if I was tired, I'd just write it down in a notebook. And then other times when it was really, really good, and I had to find out if this was true, I'll get on the computer and I'll start researching and everything that that something said voice said this thing was going to be was what I was reading. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. 
and it got to a point I was so I was so freaked out. I was like, I, was, I remember, I remember calling my mom. Like the one I told you that's a minister in the church. I called my mom. And I was like, I was on my knees by the front door. <laughs> I was on my knees at the front door, and I told my mom. gift was so so incredible that I didn't understand it to its full capacity at that time and I was like I hear these people and they're telling me things now, mind you mind you in your journey you realize these are your thoughts these you tapping into the infinite intelligence side of you all knowing your subconscious mind your Akashic records like right and so I'm sitting there and I'm talking Now imagine my mama being religious and I'm into spirituality telling her that I hear voices. <laughs> my mama told me, my mama told me I need to come back home to Jesus, y'all. <laughs> that you need for part of your right now journey that's the point and that's where you want to be at it's like you have the keys to something that unknown that a lot of people in the physical reality don't have the keys and don't know how to get to that's why i really encourage you to get to know yourself because god your source knows all it is all and that's just you <laughs> you're just like your heavenly father so to speak you have those same superpowers. Is all I'm saying here. I don't want to scare the church people. So, so y'all got choirs, so or maybe y'all still go to church on Sunday. I don't want to scare y'all, so I'm gonna stop talking about that. Anyway, <laughs> hey Blue Strip, how you doing, man? Yeah. Hey, uh, C A Ruth. Hey, beautiful. I love listening to you. Needed all of that. My best friend. I see you, babe. I see you, babe. Thank you for being here. But anyway, going back to me not preaching, I really just came here to talk about my um my be lengthy and my be longer bright up. Y'all really should get y'all some. This year is really a powerful mm, Lord. This is a really, really powerful um aphrodisiac type. I guess, you know, even if you're going like on a date or whatever, you could even put this on. Like for the ladies, you could put this on your face too. Because it's really a face, it's really good for facial nutrition. Ladies, you could put this on like underneath maybe your foundation and stuff on your face, on your arms. Like when you go out on dates, since it has the aphrodisiac properties. Even if you don't need it for your hair to grow long, because that's really the purpose of it. For maybe if you don't have your edges, if you wore wigs and all of those different things. You can get your hair, um, you, you can get rid of that acid, that build up, that yeast or whatever it is that's stopping from your hair from growing or the fact that you stripped it out with that glue. You know, you could stimulate that because this allows for circulation and anything. That's another thing. Anything that allows for circulation, that's good blood flow, that leads to another um, powerful point where it is good for erectile libido type issues. And the smell, the the essential oils that I use are very, very expensive, exotic oils that I've researched and know that they are aphrodisiacs. And so they will draw the opposite sex to you. So even if you have hair, I, I got it on my body right now. I got hair. <laughs> I got hair. I just love how it smells. You could use it. You could use it as like a little... um. 
essential oil kind of like perfume on your body it's so many benefits for it it's also good at relieving dandruff you know um yeast aka dandruff in your head it's going to help since it's um uh delivering circulation it's going to help draw or drain or get that lymphatic system flowing back to the lymphatic system all over again getting it flow we want the lymphatic system to flow because if you know anything about health and wellness you know that your lymphatic system is the backup for your blood it's supposed to be cleaning your blood if your blood is dirty you want that lymphatic system where all the acids all the fats the uric acid that lactic acid build up is going to that lymphatic system and is being drained out via your kidneys when you urinate right so you want all of those sediments to go to your urine and come out of your body. This is going to help you. All of my products are really good for that. I just want to talk about this one here today because it had, um, it had waste on me last night and it had me feeling some kind of way. I was like, I got to let them know what all of this here stuff really do and how good it really, really smelled. And it had me um, rolling my eyes in the back of my head when, it's, when the men's when smell felt fell on me last night oh and the, the bottom just in case you don't see that i have fenugreek also at the bottom i'm gonna show it on both of my page i left the fenugreek which is one of the herbs that i use fenugreek fenugreek is really really powerful in the sense that it balances hormones and it also helps with circulation and it helps with hair growth as well so i left that in to mature even the more even though it's been in the other proprietary blend of herbs I just left it in the bottle because I thought it was fancy. It looks really, really pretty. And so even through transit, it'll still be soaking up some more of the powerful benefits of being able to let your hair, allow your hair to grow. Just in case you all didn't know, I have braids in my hair. But on my YouTube channel, I showed my um, journey. I used to have a really, really low fade. But prior to that, because I wore, um, I mean, because I permed my hair and I constantly perm, I have real, real thick hair. I will perm my hair like once a month faithfully every 30 days because it was so thick. I didn't know how to control natural hair. I didn't, that's, that's just how I was brought up. You perm it, you make it straight, right? And I had never really fooled with natural hair before, but the middle of my hair because of my diet, because of the shampoos that I was using, the middle of my hair began to thin out. And so when it begins to thin out, I will wear, they have these little clips, these little extension clips that you could buy. They're like about this here long, but they have a little tiny little comb inside of them, right? And the little tiny comb that they have, you're welcome, babe. Hey, Molly Mo, needed that message. Oh, you was listening, Mo? Well, I'm happy somebody um, was listening to that and was benefited from that. So they have these little bitty clips, clamps on this little fake hair strip. And I will put that in the, just in the middle because my hair was thinning. I didn't know nothing about health and wellness back then. I'm like, why is my hair thin? I didn't think it was a perm. I didn't think it was a dye. But on top of that, when I put them clamps on there, the pressure from the clamps was making the hair come out even more. Now, mind you, I had long permed. It was dead hair because it was perm hair. But I had long permed hair. My hair was about this year length, right? To here, permed. But the middle was weakening. So I had a bright idea. I'm just going to shave, shave it all off. Yeah, what's the name of that? Yeah, I'm going to shave it all off. The name of it is, for women, is uh, called Be Longer. For men, it's called Be Lengthy. It's available on my website. The website is in my bio, um, sotofthearpub.org. Anyway, I decided I was going to shave it all off. Just shave it off because it's like, I ain't about to be walking around with the fake hair pieces and I don't want no wigs and all that kind of crap. So I shaved it off and I was like, okay, well, maybe if I shave it off and get it a new start, then it'll start growing back. But when I shaved it off, though, that's when I created this here. I created something that'll get my hair to grow. Then I began more knowledgeable about shampoos and stuff so that's when i created my shampoo <laughs> and i became knowledgeable about the ingredients in shampoo most often did not make it being the thing that's causing the the return um dandruff it's causing your hair to go bald so i was like you know what i'm staying away from commercial products so that's why i created my um be cleansing shampoo 
to get to get my hair growing. And so I, in the beginning, when I shaved all of my hair off, and and the women started warning me, yo, I ain't doing that no more. Cause then the women started looking at me in stores and stuff. I guess thinking that I bump cats or whatever, winking their eyes and stuff at me, cause I had really really low hair. But anyway. I was shaving it for low for a while, and I was like, you know, I'm going to have to let my hair grow some. And so I started letting it grow, and now my hair is back to my shoulder. I have a couple of videos when I um, crest it. It's back to my shoulder. It's about this here. It's not here where it was, but it's about right here. It's the top right here, and the middle of my hair is healthy and strong, baby, because I use my shampoo on my hair, and I put these here be longer in on, on my hair and I use my mask, uh, moisturizer on my hair because everything that I created I needed it one day I needed it. my my moisturizer I created this one here because I want my little coils to be popping because this here makes your little coils of your hair pop I did that and so I on this particular YouTube video I'm showing where I had to just flat iron my hair and I'm showing you how strong my hair the video is like you're gonna see me with my hair the, the the thumbnail on the video you'll see me with my hair hair in my hand raising it up with a little comb showing you like yeah baby I'm back up and yeah because I made my hair grow baby because I'm God in physical form and I made my hair transform energy you heard me yeah yeah so if you um have perm hair then your hair is dead pretty much yeah i'm not trying to offend anybody because our hair really already have a life force that's why it's spiraling black people here that's why it's spiraling up it is defying gravity so that's its life force it's, it's ether it's power and so when you dye in it when you are uh, permanent you kind of you're stripping that away like and you you're allowing it to be lifeless going back to the recessive and the dominant trait i well i guess i played a part in the beginning of the so-called world to create this but you did too <laughs> and to be part of this too so don't come blaming just me and as far as recessive and dominant traits are concerned yeah the straight hair is more like the lifeless and the curlier is the more dominant in flamboyant type energetic hair. Yeah. So I was pretty much that's why that's why you got that's why you gotta get the big chop if you're a, a dominant trait being. That's why we go through the phase where, where we wanna be so called natural again. You get the big chop because the dead hair ain't gonna curl back. The perm, aka dead hair, ain't gonna curl back. You ain't gonna get no coils from that. It's like your antennas on a on a, a darker hued being it's like our spiritual antenna that's just the matrix ain't nothing wrong with the other kind of hair you know it's just vibing at a different frequency going back to all things being god god vibrates at different frequencies but it's still god yeah god is life and god is death all is god you don't need matter yeah oh thank you thank you for the likes i appreciate that yes the name i gave you the name great job okay thank you so yeah yeah yes i've had dreads before i was asking oh yeah oh yeah definitely oh you should know that there if you didn't had them dreads before definitely and so this is why energetically some people that have dread locks kind of energetically intimidate people who don't like right like your hair holds so much of power, so much of memory inside it that it has its own frequency, its own aura. And so, you know, like the so-called, let's say the so-called Karens of the world, some of them will treat the ones with dreads some kind of way. I had a guy in New Orleans, one of my good friends. <sighs> he had long, long dreads. And he was a big, big man, big black man. And he had so many stories about how people treated him, you know, and, you know, perception, he was in corporate America with me and perception is kind of like everything in corporate America and they would treat him like a non-factor, not wanting him around, making him move from here to there and this and that. He had dreads and that man, he had dreads like in the middle of his back. That man cut his dreads off. Now, he, then he became Mr. So-and-so. He even 
became an executive officer in corporate America after though, after he cut his dreads, you know, because it, it can be intimidating and, you know, you corporate America and stuff. It's about the, that them wanting to have power over you, so to speak, and not you be intimidated to, you know, the ones that are on the board, so to speak. So when he cut his hair, he was welcomed and, but he had lost his power. They, they got a story in the Bible of sex about that uh, Samson and Delilah, whatever. When you lo cut your hair, you lose your power. Even if you're not looking at that story, if you go to the story of, um, or the scripture about the hair being your glory, you know, for a woman, your hair is your glory. You, you have power. There's power in your hair. There's power in every aspect of us. Because ultimately, even though we are different hues, different colors, we all emit an expression of light. We're light beings experiencing itself, playing a part of the game, matrix game with an illusion of separation, illusion of recessive and dominant traits. But at the end of the day, all has the innate ability to tap into source energy because all is God and all comes from the source. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's it. I'm about to get up out of here. The sun finally came out in the desert. Believe it or not, it's been cool for the last couple of days. And I'm going to give me some sun and get electrified. For those of you who want to check out anything on my um, website, the link is in the bio, saltoftheearthpub.org. I thank you for your attention, which is energy. I thank you for your love and your support and your yearning to want to be, do, or have more because when you move i move and i want you to remember you're god if you know nothing or remember nothing else from this life remember the purpose of this life outside of the, the, the products or whatever that i was offering you it's just get to know yourself baby even if you don't ever buy nothing from me get to know yourself because to know yourself is to know god you can't go wrong to know yourself you, i mean get in there sit still with yourself and ask yourself why why do I act like this? Why? Why am I manifesting this? Why? Because you're going to get your answer. You have all the answers to everything. When you feel a certain way, ask yourself, why? Why are we feeling this way? Can we feel it? Can we think another thought? Just get to the nitty gritty of the why and let your unfolding begin because you're powerful. Don't spend your physical reality afraid of your power. Don't spend your physical reality not knowing you. That's it. That's the video. That's the love. You don't have to buy nothing from me. But if you listen to me, know that I stand for you getting to know yourself. Because when you move, I move. And I want to move. <laughs> I want to move some mountains. And you play a part in that as far as the collective and the all is concerned. Move so that we can move mountains again. This video was from my heart to yours, babe. All right, I'm signing out on Just Be Healthy. And I'm signing out on God is Just Be. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you, Glow. Peace, 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 reflection. Bye, babe. <laughs>